Hey hi welcome back and this is a scene so this is the second part of the dependency confusion attack and if you haven't watched the first part where we set up the infrastructure and the different things we discussed about dependencies and packages so if you haven't watched that make sure you watch that and then come back here if you have now let's continue with the further part that we had so we are going to understand with the dependency confusion attack and we are going to see why we had this all thing going on so currently we have this uh, my app folder which is uh, basically a proprietary project of a company let's say it's a proprietary project of the company and in the package.json there is this dependencies express which is a public package and there is this interna pkg for hs so it's a internal package which is being used uh, it's not on the public npm registry so this is the basic setup that's being shown here as well so the researcher found that there was a package.json file in one of the paypal's uh, library or code on github and in the dependency he found that there was this public npm registry uh, public npm packages like express uh, dash js express etc and then there were a few private packages which were also mentioned here like pp logger auth paypal workflow paypal analytics paypal right so he thought that what if these packages instead of fetching it from the private npm registry if these are fetched on the public registries but since these are not there on the public registry so he thought of a clever plan and quite ingenious of him he created these package name these packages with the same name on to the public registries and so once a developer or a automated build system if they run the npm i command so they would try to fetch all these from the public registries and then instead of getting the actual private package they would install the fake attackers package from the public registry so i have a flow chart also of this it's a very simple one uh, that just to help you understand this so npm i command is being run and then npm looks for the package json it checks whether the registry value is set or not if the registry value is not set like uh, we set the registry value here uh, you could see npm config registry and the local here so there are other ways also it's quite a manual effort but there are other ways to set the package the npm config registry package so for different packages like if you have this express so you could install it from the public repo if you have this pp logger you can install it from the private repo so you could add all these into the npm rc configuration file so let's come back to this flow diagram so it looks into the package.json and sees in the npm rc whether the registry value is set or not or this environment variable is set or not so it finds that no these are not set so it uses the public registry if these values are set it would try to get the registry whatever value is set so these value could be private uh, paypal registries or whatever company is using that so it could be private registries for them sir so the attacker exploited this part of it so they created the same package name on to the public registry and that's what we are going to use so let's uh, and once the build program or the developers they tried to run this npm i command to install all the dependencies the code automatically got installed onto them and using a script tag it automatically it also got executed there we will talk about that so that's a post exploitation thing so it got executed on that and uh, here they show this diagram where they show that on apple systems a lot of data like they collected the host name and the ip address just to make sure that these were actual like which companies were using these and which whether it's being actually executed on the environment on their environment or machines or not for that they collected very uh, non identifying data just to prove their point yeah, it's a nice poc there so yeah so that's what we are going to do we are going to create a same pa like package like the internal package name and we are going to create that same package and push it onto the public npm registry so with the attacker's perspective so once a victim installs that package.json so because the uh, private package name is not mentioned there or not set there the value is not set there so these packages would be fetched from the public registry so let's recreate this so i am going to delete this node modules folder and package log.json so now i have this package.json file so this is my app and this contain these dependencies so let's say i am the victim now so what i would do is i would do npm i and i would just run this and it would install these packages 
before that let's switch to the uh, attacker's perspective so this is the attacker's terminal and here we have this same package name now let's change a few things here so let's let's push it to this so now i have already logged into the public npm registry i just want to publish this package onto that so what i do is i do npm publish this so it automatically gets published onto the public npm registry now if i search for this so now if i do a refresh here so this is my temporary account of top safe safe dispute something like that so here i am using this account i have logged in and i am publishing it so you could see that published a few seconds ago and here also the packages should be mentioning so internal package for hs so this is i have published as an attacker onto this right now i don't have any malicious code but i will also add that and show you how it would work now coming back to the victims machine so victim has downloaded this my app from maybe their local private github repository or somewhere else and now he goes on to work on that node project so he does the first thing that they would do is they would run npmi and they would try to install all the dependencies that there so express is there but internal package for hs so this is also installed but it's not the actual in internal package that they would that they should have installed from the private repo rather it's installed the, it has installed the victims package just to like prove that that's that layer so just to uh, show how the code execution would work let me change a bit of the package thing here so when package.json first thing i would uh, add a script here so pre-install so the, the uh, like these are few scripts so npm install so once you run the npm install command so there's this three things that go on pre-install install and post install so before the package is installed the pre-install script would get executed and that's why i'm just adding a code here let's say i've added you have been had so uh, a real attack scenario would not have this rather it would have some sniffing data or some executing some malicious code there so let's say i have this but before that i also need to update the version otherwise npm wouldn't take it now if i do npm publish uh, let's delete it again node modules rm package log.json so this version 1.0.1 has been published now let's switch to, so this is the victims machine so it has this tilde operator 1.0.0 so uh, slightly upper version would also work for that so let's see which version we have here right now so it should be 1.0.14 yeah 1.0.1 so now if i do npm i so here you have been hacked should be printed here because that's a pre-installed script so you could see that you have been hacked is being printed here so that's the whole dependency confusion attack and also the exploitation part so what we essentially did was because this dependency was getting installed from the public repository we created our own public package for the same name and added a expert code into it so this was a benign code you have been hacked but in the case of the researchers what they did was they they showed that they collected some basic information as to where the code was executed they used a DNS bin for that because using DNS sniffing, they could sniff the data. You could use a burp collaborator, you could do a curl. So using that, like you could sniff data out of it. So that, that's all there. So now let's come to the surmising part or summarizing the attack as to how you would go on finding this into the real world. So in real world, if you find any JS files, look for this dependencies key and the values that's there so these are basically the different npm packages name and the version with that so if you find that there are any packages which which are not on the public npm registry so try registering that the, with the same name the same package name and add some basic code so as to get a ping back from there maybe you could add a verb collaborator uh, url there with a curl or rather a, a dns hosting thing 
so you could use dns bin for that so i've skipped that part because that that would that's not basically the dependency confusion but rather post exploitation thing but that's how you basically show impact there that your code is being executed on the developer's machine or whatever machines or build system that installing these there so prevention was uh, prevention for these is that uh, whenever you are installing these uh, repositories you could add it onto npm rc like like let's say if you have this particular internal package so you could mention that from this particular registry only this should be installed and rest other uh, other modules should be installed from the public registry so that's how you pre- prevent these attacks so that these attacks are not like not exploited by other attackers or using the dependency confusion so yeah hope you enjoyed this and you like it if there are any confusion i think there could be many so one once i would say that you go through this and if you still feel confused make sure you ping me or add it in the comment section post your question on the telegram channel or the discord channel i'd be happy to help you there so thank you have a nice day